All right, we're bringing up fitness coach. What does he got for us today? Start the call. Yo. What's going on, boys? What's going on, Jack? What's going on? What are you doing? MD got something to say. MD? MD? MD scalps. We're at the gym here. You're at the gym? Increasing that tag day by day. Classic. You're trying to increase the test. What? You're trying to increase your test. Take some boosters. How long, how long you think the call is gonna go for today? It's always an hour. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I just want to say what's up to the boys. Hopefully give what give on one tip. In his grind right now. Give one tip to increase testosterone right now. Eat ten eggs a day, simple as that guys. Ten eggs? Nah, I'm joking, but not ten eggs a day, but I highly recommend eating eggs. At least four or five times a week. Yeah. What well, if you can't afford it though? Pretty expensive. That's why you get money. Mean, eggs are cheap. That's why you get money from e Oh, oh well, yeah, that's a good point. Well, that, so if you want to boost up to the red meat, the level, you know, the grist fed red meat, you got to do your e com. <laughs> okay. All right. We're yeah. gonna we're gonna start. Shaw, boys. Keep it up. Keep that grind on. Let's go. Uh, we have Sage scaring off people. Is that what I'm hearing right now? His job is his job is to teach, recruit, and he's doing the complete opposite right now. What is this? Anyways, uh, we're going to wait just a few more seconds. We only have 14. I don't get it. 27 people say they're interested and we only got 14. What is this? I got to add everyone and tell them like, bro, maybe um, I know some people do this. All right. I know. I know. It's sad. There it is. Oh, anyways, we're going to start off. So, um who's here has has been or in the past tested Facebook? Doing meta right now. Meta meta. Yeah, me. Look, before we go on into the actual ad creatives, uh, apparently Meta is a move right now. I'm in, um, I'm in uh, Anthony Eclipse's community, and they're heavily, they're heavily forcing, not forcing, but they're heavily recommending Facebook right now or Meta, let's say, because TikTok's been a shit show lately, and I can fucking say that for myself. TikTok's been an absolute shit show. And the beauty with Meta, bro, is that some people sometimes forget it's connected with Instagram, bro. I fucking use Instagram. That's the most. Pro that's probably the most fucking social media I use, and so many other people use Instagram. So, like, when you're thinking of testing on Meta, it's not fucking Facebook. If you actually go test Meta and you go see where it's placed, it's gonna be mostly Instagram. I guarantee you that. So Instagram's low key a move. And um, um, right now, we're going to be looking at image ads. I don't know if you guys, has any of you tested image ads? Let's, again, ask that question. Has anyone tested image ads? So, never, do, never done good, sadly. Well, hopefully, we're here to change that. I actually recently learned that image ads is actually goaded. And for the reason being, I think I've mentioned that before, is that one, it simplifies everything. If a product could be explained simply in just an image, it just creates so much less resistance for the customer to actually get convinced to buy the product. Also, I, again, I never thought about this, but I, I was told that people have shit Wi-Fi. 
people have absolute dog fucking, you know, McDonald's Wi-Fi. So some videos won't load. And because the videos won't load, they're just going to skip quick. But with image ads, they're always going to load because, you know, it's an image rather than a video. It takes less data. And it's just, it does better. So when I first found that out, I found a product that was easily simplified and explained in a image. So I tested image ads and it actually did pretty well for a bit. I got very good metrics with it. So I'm going to tell you five different image ad which is like setup strategies that you can easily, easily implement. It takes you, no, I took me less than an hour to make the whole thing in on Canva. I'm not going to actually go through them, but you can easily just search up the titles that I'm going to, it, don't worry, they're record. It's been recording. It's been recording. So I had a YouTube. Hello everyone. So with the titles of each strategy i'm going to give you you can literally just search it up on canva and it'll give you a bunch of templates so we're gonna now um start sharing my screen i think i'm gonna shut my camera off for now so the recording can have it so i'm gonna do this we're gonna do hold on we're gonna do this all right hold on setting everything up nice and easy nice and easy nice and easy okay so recording's good i'm going to start sharing my screen now uh here so you guys are good you see it you see it so I was I was selling this LED makeup box. Uh, they're probably cheaper because, bro, cost per clicks are like I'm telling you. I had amazing metrics, bro. I had CTRs of eight ten percent, cost per clicks of a few cents. It was insane. I don't know why. I don't know what the fuck the science is. No, I got zero sales. Yeah. <laughs> I got zero sales, but the metrics were good. <laughs> uh, the sales, I don't know, maybe it was just the product itself wasn't good or the offer. I, I was charging a lot, I think. I just wanted high margins. Um, but at the end of the day, the ad did the job. It got clicks to my website, so I know they were good. So first, we're going to start off with a simple, it's called product focus. So basically, all it is, it's literally just a heavy picture of a, like, the product is in the middle of the image, it's big, and all you got is the title, and maybe some type of, like, benefit, whatever, but it's really simple, and look, I chose this background because I was targeting it as you can travel with it, you got a little plane, but it's really simple, this one really... This one really, there's not much to it. It's just get your fucking image, your product in the middle of it, big, and just that. It's really simple. I think this one actually did well. It's pretty simple, but you can, you see, it, it really depends on the product itself. If you look at this product, you can kind of tell the benefit of it. It's a makeup box. And it's like, okay, what do I use a makeup box for? It's not some like tiny, like it's not some crazy detailed product where you have to need a video. So that's one. Two, now you got product info pointers. So this one again is another image of the product that's kind of big. And you kind of have pointers at touching the features, the benefits of it. So here, again, I have a little slogan of the benefit, bring your room with you everywhere you go. You have the title, classic. Then you have the pointers. So you got lighting, three different lighting modes, natural, cold, warm. You got the touch feature, sensible button to dimming and lighting strength, organized, easy to magic compartments, leather made with high quality materials. So whatever it is, I wouldn't say to do more than five. Uh, three would probably be the best, but you know, three to five are probably the sweet spot for pointers. And again, make it simple, clean, make sure people can read it and it's understandable. That would be the next one. 
The third would be a sales discount. So this one actually did pretty well, if I remember also. And it was having your offer big, but having kind of in like a pick collage of like, I, I've mostly seen four even pictures, but you can, you can play around with it, have fun, and you do some type of pick collage. And, you know, I know some people have a fun with that. But um, it's basically at the end of the day, it's just having a pick collage of all the images of your product and then having your main offer kind of big and bold. You see, I was selling it, buy one, get one free, and it ends tonight, have, add the scarcity. Uh, do you have some templates to share? Uh, are you talking to me? I wasn't even looking at the chat. The fourth one is going to be testimonials. I like this one too. So I kind of try to replicate since I knew it was going to be shown on Instagram a lot and more often than Facebook. I try. I kind of try to replicate like an Instagram live. This is, this one is called testimonials. So basically, you kind of replicate like a Instagram live, kind of like showing the product off on a live. You got the name of the product here next to the live button, and then you kind of have the comments from like customers. Again, I added their own images. Uh, I added this is my own text my own uh, customer reviews but again yeah like andrew said this is this i think did very well also it's so native it's so like organic people don't really look at it as an ad and it's something familiar to them like they're they're on instagram so they've definitely been on instagram lives and seen it so it's a cool way to implement kind of testimonials now you can do it in so many other ways like just by adding comments and maybe a pick collage i'm sure you've seen a bunch of pick collage of reviews um again if you just search up testimonials on canva they'll give you a bunch of different templates i saw this one i'm like this is looks really good it's really smart and um yeah again it does the job And last but not least, I think this was the shittiest one in my opinion, but it actually, I think didn't, it did perform, they all performed really good, is the us versus them. So basically, again, you have your product here, and then you have a competitors or whatever product you're competing, you go, you go your title, others, and then you have the benefits. So here I had easy to organize your essentials, where here it was unbelievably messy and disorganized. Number two, lightweight and easy to travel with. And then here, bulky and heavy to carry. Cute and simple, aesthetically pleasing, old and ugly. Uh, you could have made this better. Uh, looking at it now, honestly, I could have made it way better. It looks so plain and simple. The text is not as small, uh, like not can't really read it. But you get the gist of it. If you have those five kind of different styles of image ads, and come up with your kind of your own strategies or own creative ideas. Again, if you just search up all the titles, uh, I can write them in the chat. So if you guys have to, so you guys remember, I'll do this quick. You got product focus, uh, product inf info pointers, I'm not the fastest typer, sales. Sales discount, testimonials, and us versus us versus them. So those three kind of different types of creators for image ads, I think will do very well. Again, follow Canva, and I think that will do pretty well on your end. And maybe, again, I think you're going to get very good metrics. Now, I can't guarantee you sales. Like I said, I didn't get any sales from it. Um, but that, again, that's no issue. The things I showed you, they, they did the job. They got people to my website. It was um, on my own end that I didn't do well. So that was it. Nothing crazy. But again, I think you should, Basically, I want to make this call to kind of... Open your mind to the idea of Facebook image ads or meta ads. They're actually a new wave. And I think not a lot of people are utilizing them. They're all doing the regular TikTok. I think if you can find a product and try to move it to a Facebook image, uh, I think you'll have a lot of good results. Looking handsome. Thanks, bro. Appreciate it.
So we were actually, uh, we actually have a lot of time for Q&A, which I like. Um, so, and we were having a lot of questions in the chat. Our, our, our chat has been pretty active recently. So you guys rip up, yeah, yap time is coming. But uh, let's, let's ask some questions here. I know you guys had a lot of questions. Um, I know someone was talking to me about creative, uh, turning on smart creative. Uh, what's it called on TikTok? Am I fucking up? S smart creative sent? No, smart creative ads. Yeah, smart creatives, right? It's just smart creatives. Uh, some people were telling me like, what's the difference? And do I use it or not? Bro, it's, it, it's this like, it's a setting that really has no benefit unless you're actually using it. Like I turn it on, but I don't use it. I, I've told you in my last video when I was showing my low budget campaign strategy, I turn it on just so I can not, don't have to title each ad. It's just like something quick I use. But if you actually want to use it, that means you would have to use different uh, texts, different call to actions, and then you're creating different variations of the ads. But I don't think you, any of you should be using, so no, it does, it does basically. So let's say, let's say you, let, to make it as simple as possible, you have two ads, you turn Smart Creative on, and you have two call to actions. Now you have four different, uh, four different variations. So you have ad one, with text one, add one with text two, then you have add two with text one, add two with text two. It basically makes a, diff a bunch of different variations. And look, don't get me wrong, it is useful, but that's more of if you're scaling. But when you're testing, you don't wanna put your budget too thin. If you have a $50 budget, even a $100 budget, but you're testing like three to five creatives with like smart creative on and it becomes like 15, 30 plus different variations, each specific ad is only going to get like a few dollars spent and you won't know if it's a, if it's a winner or not. You need the you need to spend. So don't turn that on for testing. I like I said, I showed you, I turned it on, but I only had one text and one call to action, so I didn't change shit. I am just lazy and I don't feel like changing the name of the ads. That's it. So I think that, that I wanted to be clear with that. Some people might f like get fucked with that. What kind of budget would be suitable for smart creatives? Like, again, if, if this is for for testing, you should never use it. You should only use it for scaling. And bro, scaling, it's like, you should be putting hundreds of thousands of dollars. <laughs> so, um, thinking you monetize your audience, ah, we'll get there, bro. Don't worry about it. I, I just, I love, uh, I love, quick question, English or Spanish? Me hablo español. Donde está la Biblia? No. <laughs> Only two ad sets? Well, it depends. So again, uh, if you go check my last video about my uh, low budget camp campaign testing strategy, I do CBOs. Uh, you could do ABOs. I did show a bit ABOs, but I prefer CBOs. It's, it's simpler. And you would only have one ad set. You have one campaign, one ad set, and then in that ad set, all your creatives. That's it. That's all. You shouldn't have more than 10 creators max. But if you're going, oh, I want to mention, if you're going over three creatives, I say a hundred dollar budget. If you have three creatives, put 50. But if you surpass three, I think like usually what I do is I test between six to 10 creatives and I put a hundred dollars just to like speed up the testing process, testing all the creatives. Okay. So no CBO for this. For this because a b testing factors again you should not be looking at a b testing factors you're testing products <laughs> it does, i'm telling you please like i can't stress this enough do not over it for testing it is super simple you just need to know that the product and ad works that's it when you start scaling that's where it's gonna get a bit more complicated you have to be a bit more knowledgeable a bit more detailed right now it's a simple cbo one campaign one ad set creatives that's it if you want to do abo and be a bit different sure but it's more or less the same thing what is your opinion on tiktok organic i think it's good i just don't have the patience for it so but i think if you have low budget or not even bro honestly um even with low money 
uh, even with people with a lot of money, sorry, they do organic. It's just, I don't have the patience for it. Imagine, bro, I'm getting spammed right now. Every ad set targets a different pocket of audience. Don't fuck it up. That is true. That is true. But again, do you like, I don't, I don't think if you're having multiple, if you're having multiple ad sets, you're going to have to increase your budgets. Each ad needs to get a decent amount of spend. So uh, the more, the more, the more shit you touch, the more you're spending. That's all. That's all it is. Yo guys know how to fix payment fail. There's an issue with your account status on TikTok ads. Uh, what's the issue? Like, what did they tell you? What's the issue? I haven't, uh, can you explain testing with AB? I don't even know it. I haven't got to that level yet, so I can't even tell you. It's just about, it's something, it's, I know it's about split testing. And, uh, right now, even, even when I was scaling back then and I was split testing, I never used it. Uh, thanks, Sade. Appreciate that. <laughs> How many creatives in each? In each what? Campaign? Ad set? Doing less than four is dumb to me. For ABO, one ad per ad set? Yeah, 100%. Uh, for CBO, stack them across five ad sets. You could, bro. You could. It, I... I I, I know that strategy. I've heard about it. Um, it's just you're going to have to spend more. You, you can't have a $50 budget with with five ad sets. It won't be enough. How do you plan your day? I wake up, grab coffee, read for a bit, and then work all day. Find some time to go to the gym. That's it. I usually do one video and one image for each. Um, I'm not understanding one video and one image for each. What you need more ads three to five is essential at the, oh, for each product test. You do one video, one image. Yeah. Yeah. That's not enough again, especially Facebook, Facebook, you Facebook, you would need a lot of creatives. Facebook. I would say under five is pretty low with TikTok, You could do three. I don't have a number. How did the dates go? Oh, <laughs> we're we're not even halfway through the call. We're already getting off econ to personal. It did go well. It did go well. I, I, I we had fun. I don't need to waste that much. Fifty to seventy is enough. A winning ad wins on day one. You know what? I fucking agree. I agree. I have, I have like I know people say with Facebook it's different, but it's like bro. Every time I speak to someone who is scaling hard or like scaling and making big numbers on both TikTok and Facebook, they got sales the first day. So now either you didn't get sales the first day, so it's either you fix something about the thing you're doing, so it's either creatives or offer or just move on from the product. But do not like, I'm sorry, I am a strong believer. If you have something set up on day one and you get zero sales, change something. You got, you can't, I, I don't like, I, I don't like when people say, no, we'll let Facebook optimize. I'm sorry. I find that like, from my experience, it's, I don't think that's, I think that's bullshit. There was a military truck on Facebook that was really priced at 99. See, I don't have the problem with getting sales the first day. All right, Sade. Sade's flexing. Sade's flexing. Sade's flexing is one sale. You love to see it. Um, 
All right. You guys have any other questions actual about e-commerce? If not, I guess you, we can start moving to any other life questions. Uh, we're going to try to focus on e-commerce for a bit more. Feel free. Now's your time. Have you ever revived an old product? Well, technically, a lot of people do. Like, it's very rare. Some well, very rare. It's just like it's not. It's not as common when you find someone making a winner. They're like the first person to test this product. This product just came out. Like, usually, it's from products that have been tested before. Now, if you're talking about reviving. Um, I, look, that's just a saying, really. At the end of the day, products have life cycles. Like, if a product's trending in the summer, it'll die down in the winter, and it'll come back next summer. And so, basically, reviving. Let's say um, and a, a perfect example for reviving, let's say, an evergreen product that's not trending would be kind of like the, the fucking smoke diffuser, right? Everyone was making money. Everyone was selling smoke diffusers, like the whatever, you know... Uh, you know the in the in the room and it was kind of saturated it was kind of dead then someone revived it by coming out with a new angle by saying they can put your boyfriend's cologne and make your room smell like your boyfriend so if you want to look at reviving a product it would have to be coming up with a new angle who is your inspiration in e-com space You know, lately, I've been liking Jordan Walsh. I know he doesn't post e-com anymore, but that's exactly what I want to do. He started with e-com and drop shipping, and then kind of obviously now moved to bigger and better things, and it, he's living the life. And uh, I want to follow a similar, similar route, you know? Another question, since I scaled my product to 25K with my Pixel, it was a dress. Can I continue to test other dresses on the same Pixel? You could. Well, it depends. Is it on TikTok? No, but even if it's on TikTok, I think if you believe the target audience is very similar, I think you could. How do you plan for different quarters or specifically Q4 coming up? Uh, right now, my plan is uh, just get as much knowledge skills and experience as much as i could and then for q4 to actually kind of focus more on a brand rather than just like a product uh and try to you know try to hit a big with q4 i think q4 is going to be my escape goat i'm very excited for it but like i said now i'm just focusing more on learning and experiencing um and then closer to the date of q4 around september october start looking into uh, a brand i've been studying reading books watching videos about branding and uh, i'm just getting better and learning about it don't think about it unless you have a brand yeah look i don't think much about it right now uh but um it's a plan i, I plan i plan my life you know i have plans <laughs> Did you get the image ads in your TikTok ad account? No. No. He inspired. He's inspired from me. Oh. Do you fuck with Jordan Brown? Um, I don't follow him. Never did. I watched like two videos on him. Yeah, I I don't I don't really I'm not into uh social drama and shit so i don't give a fuck i just focus on what i gotta do i focus on you guys my community that's it that's all you're doing branding with clothing or not i haven't started yet i haven't chosen the brand uh like i said right now i'm just focusing on uh, um, building up my capital building up my experience and then in a, in a few months from now start looking into it How many products a week you test? Yeah, the, um, I was just talking about that before, talking about mass test, uh, uh, mass testing. I actually have a video coming out tomorrow about this, kind of, touching about it. 
uh how i was literally in the rabbit hole of like mass testing i was testing like products daily uh and it was just it was a dark rabbit hole i think you learn apps you gain nothing from it uh I, again you'll see in the next video but i was talking about how this guy who's made 10 million plus in e-commerce has tested only seven products he's a fucking sniper he doesn't rapid fire he's a sniper and I think that's a sh extreme as well. I think if you find the middle and kind of just slow it down a bit and put more thought process into it, follow what's like, follow again, you'll, you'll learn about this next video, but it's like, look at global, global trends. Like what's currently happening right now? What issues are people dealing with globally? And then find a product that can solve it. What's your product research techniques? Again, um, uh, I have a video coming out tomorrow about it. Um, it I switched it a bit. It's really now um, kind of actually just using more of my own thoughts and ideas and then using ad spy tools to validate it. Where before it was just use ad spy tools, whatever's trending, trending, pop it in. But now I'm, I'm trying to implement more of understanding the customer. I think that's the most important part. Guys, at the end of the day, dropshipping is just a fulfillment method, but it's a business. You're doing a business. You are a business owner. And how successful business owners are created are understanding your customers, their pain points. So if you're just selling some fucking, like for me, if you're just selling some clothing products, uh, yeah, you can make a few thousand dollars for sure, but it's like, do you really understand them? Or is it going to go anywhere? Or, or do you, or even if it doesn't, or even if it does, I mean, did you learn anything? Like, Are you like, I don't know. I just feel like I'm moving more towards problem, problem solving products and understanding the customer more. What book is good for self-improvement? Have everything in my brain, like starting e-com, learning about money, going to gym, wake up early, but I feel like I need a book. I need a book first. Don't know why. On self improvement. Uh, can you be more specific? Cause like, a lot of a lot of things are in the branch of self improvement. Like I have books on specific topics. So, uh, maybe come up with a specific topic you're looking for. I can probably give you a recommendation. Think and Grow Rich. Yeah, it's a classic. It's like one of the first ever books I've ever read. Uh, if you're looking to, if you're talking about now, uh, Think and Grow Rich, I have that book, but on steroids. So I've already mentioned the reality transfers, transurfing. That book I think is a must, but, um, for Think and Grow Rich on steroids is this book, The Power of Your Conscious Mind by Joseph Murphy. Goaded book. This is another goaded book. This And it's not that big. So I think it's like a classic that I think everyone needs to read. Yeah, Reality Transurfing for sure. I think it is. A, is I think it's a must. I think it's an honestly a must. It's It's... It just changed, like, I can't explain it. It just changes your whole perspective on fucking reality itself. It's the whole book. There it is. Yo, Seb has been grinding it. He's almost done. Look at that. It's, it, it, it is a crazy book. I absolutely love it. I would reread that. Like once I, I've read a lot of good books and I'm kind of satisfied, I would probably reread that like once a year. I'm not even kidding. Once every two years, maybe. It's so good. All right, any other, any other e-comp questions? Or we're uh, coming to an end for this call. So maybe now we can just talk about anything. TRN with the cigar, Rich. I'm actually going to a cigar lounge Monday. 
It's been a while. It's been a while since I've had a nice cigar. Look, look, I feel bored when I read books. Look, books are not a necessity. I love reading books. I've read books before I even want to make money. I was a nerd, okay? I love books. So that's why I read books. But trust me, there are so many people out, like so many multi, I would even say billionaires, that don't read books. It's not a necessity. It doesn't directly correlate to your fucking bank account, okay? So don't feel bad if you don't like books and don't read it. It doesn't matter. If you're strictly just looking to <laughs> improve your life, um, books are not necessary. Your real life experience are more important. So, technically, yes, less books, more work. If you if if you take that time to put the work in instead, I just see I just see it more as instead of fucking around, I'll read a book. Look, again, it's not necessary. I, I, I can't emphasize this enough, but it's just, if you read, if you enjoy it, if you, it's not necessarily about, like, I enjoy physically, like, I actually like the action of reading, but some people don't, but they also like the topic and that will get them to read. And so for them, reading won't, like, it won't bother them because they just genuinely love the topic they're reading about. I think if you, if you can find that, uh, you can start liking reading a bit more. Or audiobooks. You're right. Go to chat GBT. Summarize main pain points. Like I have so many things to do, but I feel like my life is not a place to get the money rolling in. I was reading. No excuses from Brian, but it's about discipline. Honestly, if you are so like you really want to get reading in your life, a simple 10 to 20 minutes is all you need daily. And I can guarantee you, you can find yourself scrolling on social media for 10 to 20 minutes every day. You can replace it with reading. I guarantee you. I'm guilty of it too. I scroll through social media all the time brainlessly not like doing any research so um it's just you try to minimize it and try to replace that's atomic that's ba i never read atomic habits but i didn't have to but i basically understood it to replace a bad habit to get rid of a bad habit you have to replace it with a good one so spend time more reading than scrolling right how do you notice products that will work without spy tools now of course you see spy tools to validate the product but how do you know what will pop off Again, like again, my next video will cover about it a bit more, but it's really just understanding the customer. If you genuinely like, if you think about it, ask people or you yourself, that would be the best situation possible. You yourself have gone through an issue and have a product that that solves it, and that means you would buy it. I'm sure there's other people that have that same issue, like it's guaranteed. So it's more of. Yes, obviously, spy tools are amazing to validate products, to look at other people. If they did it, did it go well? What was their angle? What was their website? What was their creatives? But th the deep roots of a winning product is just having an issue that people have and the product solves it. So if you can come up with this idea that a lot of people, a big, vast majority of people are having an issue and this product can solve it, I think it will do well. What about gym? I go to gym every day. Um, Sundays I go for runs instead. But my gym, my gym workouts are not crazy. I spend 40 minutes to an hour max. That's why I'm able to go every day. But I do some type of activity every day. And it's usually gym. Whose course is shit? I'm missing. You guys are having like a conversation within the questions. So I'm fucking my brains all over the place. Any websites for free ebooks? Uh, yeah, check Z Library and Genesis Library. What is the best spy tools you're using right now? Uh, right now it is PP Ads. Uh, I've been using Winning Hunter a bit. A lot of people say that it's uh, it's good. 
Oh, you're talking about like, uh, sp yeah, you can use stuff like Spy Crew. I'm still in Spy Essentials. I might have to move to Spy Crew to get access to all the ad spy tools. Supply to mass market and have it either be a problem solver, passionate market, or in security market, right? Yeah, but all, all everything that you said, passionate market and insecurity, those are problems to be solved. At the end of the day, a product, even like you might not think about it, but it's like clothing, right? You might not think, how does clothing solve a problem? But it's like the problem, I know it's very like, it's not, it's not like the most clear problem solver, but it's like if the girl, let's say, looks girl, uh, good, she can get solve her problem by picking up a guy, finding a husband, and vice versa. Winning Hunter is good. Winning Hunter has the features of looking at a competitor and seeing if they're upscaling or downscaling, which I really like. That is really cool. But they don't... They're, I like I still like PP because PP has everything. I don't I feel like you can't miss with PP. But with Winning Hunter, they still don't have everything up there yet. I think it's just if you give it a bit more time. That's why I think it's up and coming. No, PP is good. Ah, uh, you guys. Yes, PP ads is good. PP ads is for TikTok. Can run TikTok. Pro yeah. Yeah, basically, that's a lot of strategy that people are doing. They're going on PP ads, looking for products that did well on TikTok and moving it to Facebook. I would suggest not to do the other way around. It doesn't work. Uh, bringing a product from Facebook to TikTok is rarely the case. It's just usually the, it's usually TikTok to Facebook. Yeah, PP ads uh, honestly have crazy products too. I've seen some wild, wild products, but that's just, it's just TikTok, right? People are selling the wildest shit. What? What did I run? Anyways, if you guys have no other questions, we can end this a bit early. I know it's Friday. We all want to go live our lives, enjoy our Fridays. Yes, also Winning Hunter does have apparently an accurate revenue tracker. If it's true, um, I was in a call, guy tracked his own store and it was accurate as fuck. That's crazy then. That's honestly insane. Then if that's yeah, I've I've been hearing it's fucking accurate, and that's why I started. Um, I started using it. I started indulging into it. What do you guys have plans for this Friday? What What are you guys up to? What are you guys up to? We have plans. Are you guys going out? Are you grinding? Uh, Munir, if you go into these groups like Spy Crew, like Sage saying, or I'm in Spy Essentials, uh, it's like $20, $30 a month. You get access to all of them. So it really saves a lot of money and they don't become expensive. Heading back home. Nice, nice. Getting the store ready for this week. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Even me. I'm uh, running another test today. I haven't checked the metrics in a while. But um, you just, oh, we're just, uh, we're just grinding here. Honestly, personally, in my personal life, I'm redoing, my family's redoing my kitchen. Uh, so... It's going to take a lot of time out of my day to help, you know, um, de uh, dismantle and break down all the, the floor tiles, um, all the cabinets, whatever it is. Then next week, in a week from now, I'm going on vacation. 
So um, I'm just trying to get as much work as I could, I can possible. Uh, and that's about it. But still gonna be grinding no matter what. Every day I, there's not one day I don't work. I, I it's been like that for a year, for two years. It might one day might be low, like I work less than others, but I always try to find time. We always have some free time. I'm more than a Dominican with my uh, my family. Is drop shipping halal? It really isn't. I don't know why people say that. It really. Why do people have such a bad like idea of drop shipping? I don't get it. It's a fulfillment method. Bro, you think like Gymshark, you think that's how I'll, what do you mean? They're providing real value to customers and they end up growing to be a billion dollar company. They started with dropshipping. They started like just like you on Shopify. I don't, I don't, how? I'm not understanding. I'm, no, I'm Christian, but I see a lot of people talking about how it's haram or I don't, I, I'm not understanding. If you do some scammy shit, yeah, you could potentially do some scammy shit, but if you do drop shipping properly, you're just a business. You're providing products that solve issues to people, and that's real value. You're just getting it from a supplier that's in China. And what, you don't think all your products that you're consuming right now are not from China? That's the whole fucking country. I, I, I don't like when people say that. It makes like, it just like, it makes no sense. In Islam, you can't sell something you don't own. But what is what? What do you mean own? You're paying like technically, you're paying the supplier for how much the product costs. That means you own it. If you buy something, that means you own it. Yeah, like yeah, you may not be touching it physically, but you're paying for it. It's just like a service. You're paying for a service. I own, let's say I pay for an online course. I own the course. I can't touch it, but I, I own it because I paid for it. And then, yeah, Gertie, that's a, that's a smart example. Uh, drinking and smoking is haram, so they'll do that, but then you won't do dropshipping because it's haram. Like, you got to pick and choose your battles, man. At least one, there's benefits of it. Like, you can be perfect in all realms, but at least, like, you know, like, choose, again, like I said, pick and choose your battles. You don't own books in libraries, authors write them, so you don't own them, but you do sell them in the libraries. You, know, you don't own, bro, no, but you own your physical copy, like, you own, like, it's yours, you paid for it. You own the physical copy of the book. You can't claim that you wrote the book. You didn't create it, but you own it now. It's like real estate. You own a building. You didn't create the building, but you bought the building. Dropshipping is e-com, bro. Of course it's halal. I'm not understanding. It's, I don't think it is. Again, it's not even my religion, so what does my opinion matter? But I don't think it is. I actually don't think it is. If you do it properly, if you, act, like I said, if you do it properly, you actually care for the customers, care that your product is well made and it actually provides value. I don't think it's like bad. Yes, Facebook has been the move. Uh, if you could do image, do image. You could do both. I've, I've done in the same campaign, both image and videos. You probably live in the West. Bro, that has nothing to do with me living in the West. I'm not under, like, you guys are crazy. So how, like. No, we're not getting heated. I'm not getting heated. Bro, it's not even my religion. I don't care. You know, everyone mad respect. I'm just, I'm actually just genuinely trying to understand why people perceive it as halal 
or haram, whatever, I don't know. That's what I'm saying. That's a good point for the affiliate marketing. I said it's halal. It means it's permissible. See, I don't even know. Yeah, I don't know the terms then. Yeah, look, to each their own, man. Again, everybody, you follow your your own motives. If you if you believe it's wrong according to your religion, then don't do it. For sure, don't do it. I, I actually I'm again, I'm not trying to change people's opinions about it. I, I'm actually just genuinely like trying to understand like why do you come up with this conclusion? Because it's it's cool. Like not cool, it's just like it's like it's crazy to me like how you come up with this. I'm I'm trying to understand like yeah you guys have explained it pretty well I just don't I don't see it I don't I don't see it Are you in Canada? Yeah, I live in Montreal. Look, wow, it's actually crazy how we yapped for so long we actually brought it to the hour. The presentation was under 20 minutes. This is a crazy YouTube video. <laughs> People are faulty. <clears throat> no Muslim is perfect. For no one's perfect for sure. Uh, it's called the book is called The Power of a Subconscious Mind. It's uh, honestly I I would because there's so many good books that I've read that I want to reread, but there's also so many good books that I haven't read that I want to read. But I know for a fact, like when I get to a certain age and I've read a shit ton of books, I, I'll know that, okay, these are the best books and I'm just going to reread them constantly. And I, I think so far, um, the power of subconscious mind one is definitely on that list to reread. Another book um, is the way of the superior man. I know it has nothing to do with e-com, but um, trust me, it is good. It is good for life. It's good to understand your role. As um, as like yeah, it's I, I honestly I can't even explain. It talks about talks about sexual polarities. It's really good. It's more of a spiritual connection book, but it's good. Uh, I can't find the blue heart. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. But yeah, I remember it was like a unique cover. That's why I bought it. <laughs> I found I forgot where I found it. it. Was it was like a while ago. It doesn't really matter. At the end of the day, it's the same. It's what's inside the book. I got the cover. It was even more expensive. I just thought it was cool. If if there's a book that I know I'm going to like, I knew I was going to like this book. And they have a hard cover and have like a cool... I always buy the cool one. I know it's extra money, but... I, I, I'm, I told you, I'm a nerd. I like my book collection. This is fucking nothing. Eventually, when I have my own fucking place, my own office, you're going to have... Like, I'm sure you've seen other creators. They have like the library wall behind them that's going to be me mark my words yeah it's fucking sick with a fucking pimped out wood desk sick all right guys well i think that's it uh we lost a few people we lost almost half due to our yapping of uh, not e-commerce but that's fine as long as everyone knows what they're doing i'm just here to again i'm not a teacher I don't claim myself to be a teacher. I just provide value and knowledge of what I learn. What works, what doesn't, I'm not sure. But we come in here just to connect with other people, likely-minded people, and that's how we grow, right? So, Sade's 19. Pfft, young and Young and It's a little kid. <laughs> I'm waiting for a reaction. <laughs> oh, that's funny anyways guys enjoy your fucking friday i know sometimes you may be stressed because you're not where you want to be yet but trust me the beauty of it is this is from gary how do you pronounce his name gary v i'm just gonna say gary v someone i don't want to leave off with this someone was talking about how they want to be somebody and he snapped them up slapped them not the actual physically but just oh Word slap has said, you are somebody right now. You are somebody right now. 
So please remember that although you are not where you want to be, you have high expectations for yourself. That's completely fine. But you are a person, a real human being. You are somebody right now. So enjoy your life as much as you could. Enjoy the times that you work hard. Enjoy the times that you're up late at night grinding. Enjoy it. Enjoy and and enjoy life. Go out sometimes. Take advantage of the nice weather. I agree. Take advantage. Go out. It doesn't have to be. I'm not talking about getting pissed drunk, but go out uh, with friends. Go play some sports a few times. Trust me. It'll benefit. It's gonna benefit you more in the long run. I know it's not directly working on the business, but I promise you. Enjoy life right now. You're somebody right now. I want to leave that off. You, I'm looking in the eyes. Looking in the eyes. You're somebody right now. Have a great Friday, guys. I love you all. Keep hustling. Keep grinding. And like I said, like always, where am I going to see you? Of course, I'm going to see you at the top.